you know, all the way from Brampton, Ontario, by way of Los Angeles, California. He set a new UK attendance record on his last appearance at this very venue. The biggest stand-up comic in the world is here for you tonight. And now, for the thousands in attendance, and the millions watching around the world, live from O2 Arena in London, England, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for Russell! and DJ Spin Bad, ladies and gentlemen. This was scratching from the start and spinning so bad. What's up? That's right. Listen, tonight we're going to have fun. I, I, I can't have you guys being an English audience and going, <laughs> That's what you did to me last time I was here. And I got off stage and I go, <laughs> Hated it. And then I checked Twitter. I'm like, I had a great time. I'm like, would you let me know? So it's not performance art, it's not West End, this is stand-up live. And, you know, you're going to laugh when you laugh, and you're not going to hold it in and go, maybe I should do this on the way home. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I almost crashed on the roundabout. I was pittering about it. Uh -huh. I don't need any of that horse shit. It's a long drive back to South Hall and Hounslow. I know where most of you live. So... Where's the white people at tonight? Where are you? All right, good. I miss you guys. I don't know what happened. Um, there was a time when England was white. And, um, this used to be the factory that made white people. This was... I miss you, white folks, you know? You really don't. I, it's like, I don't, let me, I, I don't know what the brown people have done to offend you. But I'm asking you to come back. Is that your, is that your man, sweetheart? Yeah? And you're a brown girl? Nice. Well, hang on to him. He's a collector's item. They've stopped making them. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but... White people are on limited release. <laughs> It's funny because when I was a teenager, I was an angry teenager. I'm sure every teenager is an angry teenager, but I was hanging around the blacks. And, um. <laughs> you're a little more Afrocentric than the ones I was hanging out with. You. I'm not sure if that's a dashiki or an Indian shirt. You're like, fuck it. So I'm hanging around the black guys. I'm a teenager. I'm listening to Public Enemy. I, I didn't have a reason for this, but I was angry at white people. And when white people would walk past me, I was angrier than my black friends were. White people would walk past me and be like, fucking white people. And my black friends were like, why are you so angry? I'm like, I don't know. I think I'm just fighting the power. And that was an adult, I realized how ridiculous that behavior was, you know, and... And it's embarrassing now, but when I see white people now, it's different, you know what I mean? Obviously, I mean, I see the same thing, you know what I mean? But it's different now, you know what I mean? And whereas it used to be fucking white people, now it's fucking white people, you know? It's more of a, a rediscovery. England's changed, man. From the time I started, used to come over here and to it now, it's... I remember when I used to come over here, the Indians were the ones where everybody was like, Oh, fucking Indians everywhere, mate. Fucking... Can't go anywhere, fucking Asian, fucking Stony, fucking Bacon Stony, fucking blah, blah, blah. Remember when everybody had a hard on for us? And now when I come back to England, even the, the Indians are like second and third generation now. We get pissed off when we see Polish people now, don't you? I know you do. <laughs> I 
I go to a restaurant, the minute I see a J in a name that doesn't need a J in it, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sakes, this is not gonna be good. Excuse me, and Janishkishku, I mean, It's a Janishku. What do you want? I would like to eat something. Uh, here's the menu. Can I get a Coke? Uh huh? Coca Cola. We don't have Coke. We have Pepsi. I'll take a Pepsi. But you want Coke? Oh. Service is shit with these guys. Where are the Polish people tonight? Are you here? Good. <laughs> they're up there. They don't even know why they're here. I don't know. I see a show. Maybe it's funny, maybe it's not. I don't know. I... You're Polish, sweetheart? And, and your boyfriend's Indian? No? You're not Indian? Have you looked in the mirror? Have you... Look, I'm not an expert on the subject. But if I was to racially abuse you... What are you? South African. So Indian. Okay. When you're in South Africa, what do they call you? Oi, fucking coolie, move it. Stinking coolies are walking around everywhere. What part of South Africa? Durban? Chatsworth? Cape Town. Okay, because you're fancy. So your family's Indian from South Africa? Yeah, all of a sudden, huh? <laughs> I had to go through your fucking lineage to get the answer? That... What am I, familytree.com? Get out of here with that shit. Black guy, where's your family from? <laughs> Senegal. Senegal. That's Africa. Do they have Indians in Senegal? Uh, they've started coming in. They've, they started coming in. <laughs> <laughs> what are we, fucking cockroaches, the way people describe us? I don't know. We, it used to be lovely, and then they started coming in and opened up the cereal one morning. There was a fucking Indian in there. It was, You know that he's... Where is he? There he is. Um, there's so many fucking Indians, I couldn't even find you. You see what I mean? That's... You know how that happened, right? You know how that his... He's just as Indian as we are. But his forefathers, uh, unlike my forefathers, his forefathers were not fast runners. You see, my forefathers saw the ships coming into the harbor, and we went, I'm not getting on that boat. <laughs> and his forefathers went, hey, look, a boat. <laughs> they ended up in South Africa. Why am I cutting sugar cane? I'm diabetic. <sighs> well, good to have you here, um, Indian guy. <laughs> By way of default. <sighs> <sighs> A lot of Africans in England now. I mean, I remember... Uh, hey, what's up? <laughs> Guess you were doing your hair or something? That's what took you so long? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Sometimes we're late. What do you know? Yes. <laughs> on time, not on time. As long as there's time, we don't care. <laughs> I remember when I used to come to England back in the day. I, 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 you could you could be sure that 
most of the black people were West Indian. I remember that. And right, where, where are you tonight, West Indian people? Where are you? Yeah? Guyanese guy, you, you, you can't claim West Indian and South American. You either pick one or the other. You must be the most proud Guyanese guy ever to wear that ugly ass jacket, I'll tell you that. You. He's Indian too, just for the record. That's, uh, just like the South African guy. Different stop on the boat, that's all. This stop, Guyana. This sounds good. I'm a guy and this is Anna. Let's go. <sighs> Any Spanish people here tonight? <laughs> They're always in the. We are up here. Mira. <laughs> what kind of Spanish are you? Are you La Latino Spanish or are you or is Spanish from Spain? Mexican? What the fuck are you doing in England? They said head for the border, not the borders. What are you doing in England? Your parents came here? My dad's Mexican. My dad's Mexican. And he ended up in England? Sorry? Your mom's English. Your mom's English. I, I, I figured that much. But how did they meet? My mom worked in Mexico. Your mom worked in Mexico. Apparently, and uh, <laughs> do you speak Spanish at all? I, I don't have to. You don't have to answer me in Spanish. It's not like it's not like you're gonna go un poquito, and I'm gonna go ala pasada, pasada, pasada. Not gonna happen. You know what I mean? It just. I live in Los Angeles, so I mean I should know Spanish, and my wife is is Latina, so you know I, I should know at least something, but. I don't know shit, you know. I know I like the way Spanish sounds when South American people are speaking it. I like the way it's, I, I don't understand it, but at least the words are clear to me, you know what I mean? When I hear them speaking, I know when a sentence begins, and I know when it ends, and you can tell by the tone whether it was a question or a statement, you know, but I don't know, but fuck yeah, you know. There's languages you don't know, like Chinese, when you're somebody speaking Cantonese, you don't know whether it was a sentence, a paragraph, a statement. Where are the Chinese people at tonight? I, I see an Asian. There you are. Okay. You know what I'm talking about. In Cantonese, sometimes they don't even start the, the sentences at, at the right volume. It's not like they go, sometimes they turn the volume like up as they're speaking. And I mean, like, Cantonese is a fun language, but it's a hard one to learn. When I was in Hong Kong, all I, I learned the dumbest words when I was in Hong Kong. I learned how to say snot. Basey. And the only reason I think I knew that was because, uh, I think because I have a big nose, and I was in Hong Kong, and nobody has a big nose there. But that, that, when I kept hearing basey when I'd walk past people. I'm sure they were going, uh, Don't look at his nose, much have a basey. That's what I'm sure they were translating. Don't look at his nose, basey. And then... Hard language to learn, though. Do you speak Cantonese? You do, it, oh, do, yeah. <laughs> What's your name? Sorry? V? Just the letter V. <laughs> Vin, Vinny. A V-I. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> His name really is V. But he spells it out, so it's different. What's your last name? Gina. Hey ho, uh, this is Vagina. Sorry about being a cunt earlier. <laughs> when I, have you been? To, is your family from Hong Kong? Oh, they're from Vietnam. Yeah, that's what I thought. But you know Cantonese, and you know Vietnamese as well. No, his, your, your girlfriend's Vietnamese? She's like, I know Vietnamese, okay. <laughs> Do you, have you tried Vietnamese soup, you guys? You ever had it? It's a big deal in America. It's spelled P-H-O. Pho. But it's not the way it's pronounced. 
And in America, people are annoying because I'll be like, uh, yeah, let's go get some pho. And they'll be like, uh, you know, Russell, it's actually pronounced pho. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, to show respect for the Vietnamese culture, you'd probably pronounce it pho. And I go, oh, okay, cool. Why don't you go pho cough right now? Because you're really annoying me. Well, you know what? Go folk yourself. How about that? Why don't you? Now, so, uh, have you been to Hong Kong? Have you been? Uh, when I went to Hong Kong, I wanted to go shopping, right? And uh, I don't drive, obviously, when I'm there, because uh, I'm not strong enough to carry a rickshaw, but I, um, <laughs> no, I, I, don't, I don't drive when I'm there. But I'm there, and I go to the guy at the hotel. I go, hey, I want to go shopping. Um, what's the shopping area? Like, what's the best place to go shopping? Oh, you want to go uh, shopping, huh? You want to go to Chim Tha Choi? And I go, I don't know what you just said, but... <laughs> How are you going to travel? Taxi? I go, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and take the train. Oh, train's good. Hong Kong has the best train service. I'm like, that's cool. Um, is there something I should... What, what's the stop that I need to get off of? Oh, uh, you want to get over the stop called Chim Tha Choi? I go, well, how am I going to know when I'm there? I can't read the fucking symbols. I don't know which chimney and bridge leads me to shopping. Why can't they just have a picture of a person holding a bunch of bags going... I go, uh, so how will I know when I'm there? He goes, okay, so when you're on the train, you must listen. What am I listening for? For a sound. Now, here's the thing. We may laugh at people and think, aha, uh -huh, they're so stupid. But really, I'm the fucking idiot because he's explaining normal shit to me. <laughs> it's like, a sound. I go, well, what's the sound I'm listening for? Uh, when on the train, right before you get to your stop, you're going to hear, boop. <laughs> and then what? Then you listen for, chim sa choy. <laughs> I go, Tim, Tim's bok choy. No, no. Tim Sa Choi. Tim's got a boy. Tim Sa Choi. Try to say it just like me. Tim Sa Choi. So I go, Tim Sa Choi, right? I just copied him exactly, and he goes, Oh, you speak Cantonese. I go, No, I'm copying you. You do good. So I'm on the train, right? And, uh, I want to listen to my iPod, but I can't now because I have to listen for boop. So I'm sitting there, and the only way I can remember Chim Sa Choi without having to do this all the time is I'm sitting there, and I swear to God, I'm sitting there. I must look like a crazy person. I'm sitting on the train, I'm going, Chim Sa Choi, and I don't care. Chim Sa Choi, and I don't care. So we're getting to our first stop, and I hear boop. And I'm like, Then I hear, and I'm like, that doesn't sound shit like where I gotta go to. <laughs> then the doors close and we start moving. We get to the next stop here. Quarry Bay. Did he just say Quarry Bay? Why can't I go shopping in Quarry Bay? I can say Quarry Bay. So we start moving again, and then I hear, Chim Sa Choi. I swear to God, I must have looked like a lunatic, because the minute I heard Chim Sa Choi, I jumped the fuck out of my seat. I was like, Chim Sa Choi! And, and I'm sure everybody thought I was there studying. He's a kung fu master. And he's studying it in the shopping district. What's your name, my Chinese friend? Sorry? Wing? Wing. Oh, Wayne. Oh, sorry, I'm a bad, you know. I went with the stereotype on that one, you know, I, uh... Wang. Wang. <laughs> Wayne. Wayne? Like, as in John Wayne. As in... That's what I thought when I looked at you. I was like, that guy looks like a Wayne. Do you have a Chinese name too, Wayne? Go for it, buddy. What is it? Some what? <laughs> Chim Sa Choi, you think what it is, yeah? My name is Shopping District. <laughs> Chinese name is Shopping. 
What, uh, what is it? Chang Wing Man. Chang Wing Man. So I wasn't far off when I said Wing, was I? Chang Wing Man. What does it mean? Man who likes to eat chicken wings. Well, I'm glad you're here, Chung Wing Man. Chung Wing Man, Chung Wing Man, does whatever a Chung Wing can. Lay ho, ho, ho. Okay, I'm going to go. So, what I'm trying to say is with the Spanish language, <laughs> I have ADD, I get distracted real easy. I, uh, but what I'm saying about the Spanish, can I get back to that there, Chung Wing Man? Um, the Spanish that the South American people speak, what I'm really trying to say is, I just like the way it sounds. Because uh, the words are clear to me. I, and the reason I say this is because last year I went to Spain. And uh, if you've ever gone to Spain and you heard the real Spanish being spoken, you know that it sounds gay as shit. <laughs> uh, tell me I'm lying. They speak Spanish with a lisp over there. I didn't know. I got off the plane. The guy's like, Hola, señor. Como está? I'm like, seriously, dude? That was a long flight. I'm sure you're a great human being. But I'm not prepared for this right now. I'm going to talk to this guy. Excuse me. Sí. First time in Barcelona. It freaks me out that they all speak Spanish with a lisp over there and then you go to places like South America and they don't speak Spanish with a lisp at all. And you think they would because the Spanish went to them and made them learn their language. But even they realized how fruity it sounded. Repeat after me. Como estas? Como estas? Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yay. Oh, yay. Como es? Como estás? Why won't you sound like me? Because you sound gay. And I'm trying to figure it out when I'm in Spain. Like, how can an entire country speak with a lisp? This makes no sense to me. There's no way that they can all have an oversized tongue. So I asked around, and this is what they told me. I'm not making this up. They told me that apparently back in the day in Spain, there was a king who had a lisp. And in honor of the king, everybody spoke with a lisp. And I'm like, that's the... And, and it just stuck. I'm like, that's the dumbest story I've ever heard in my life. And then I started thinking about it. Maybe that's what happened to our Indian people. Maybe... We sounded like this. And then some king came along, he's like, hello everybody. <laughs> and everyone's like, yo, what's up with the king, dude? Is his head loose? I don't know, but just talk like him so he doesn't feel like an asshole. <laughs> yes, sir, can we help you? What's your name? Priyan. What? Priyan. Priyan. <laughs> why do you say it like a dick? Why do you gotta be like, I'm oh, Priyan. Priyan. <laughs> Relax. It's not that serious, dude. It's so, Priyan. Are you Indian there? Prion. <laughs> Have you gone back at all? I was there uh, two years ago. I was in Bombay and um, I was there. It's not a. We're not going. I'm just telling you I was there. It's not. <laughs> Bombay wasn't the key word for you to win a prize. It was uh, just, uh, the, really the place I was at. <laughs> I was in Bombay, here's the trippy part. I was in Bombay two years ago, um, and I was there 
one month before the terror attacks happened. Remember the terror attacks that happened in 2008? Uh, do you know about those, black guy? <laughs> Not terror attacks, but the ones that happened to my people. Do you know about that? <laughs> you don't really? You don't? He's like, uh, what happened? <clears throat> you were in Senegal and they don't have fucking news over there? <laughs> here's what they, they, they seriously they, they, there was a terror attack in India it's not like 9-11 here's the thing 9-11 happened it lasted 20 minutes this terror attacks in India three days only in India could that happen it could end up like a cricket match three fucking days it's like <laughs> we shall continue this terror tomorrow <laughs> and here's the trippy part I was in the Oberoi Hotel, the first hotel that they took out. I was in that hotel one month to the day before the shit happened. And I remember watching it on news back home. I was like, oh my God, I was just there. Did I forget anything? <laughs> there goes toothpaste I'll never see. <laughs> but the terrorists have been fucking with India for a long time. They have. They've been, well before 9-11 ever happened, the terrorists have been fucking with India. And here's the messed up part. They keep hitting India, and India doesn't do shit back to anybody. It's like the terrorists hit us and we go, stop it. <laughs> Don't do it, man. <laughs> it's bad, so I said stop. That's you. <laughs> those are pretty crazy terror attacks that happened uh, uh, to, in 2008. They were pretty nuts. Personally, not the worst ones that happened in Bombay. The worst terror attacks, in my personal opinion, happened in 2006. And uh, I'm not basing it off destruction or how many people they killed, which was pretty crazy all on its own. But I'm basing it simply off of the date in which they chose to attack. You know, India got attacked on July 11th. We got hit on 7-11. <laughs> it's almost like the terrorists had a sense of humor that day, you know? <laughs> Should we get them on the 10th or the 12th? The 11th. The comedy practically writes itself. <laughs> and you know what the worst part about those attacks were? Weren't even the attacks. It was watching George Bush's dumbass have to get in front of the world media the next day and address it. Just a smug look on his face, you know? <laughs> in America, we had our own devastating events of 9-11. And now in India, they have their own 7-Eleven. <laughs> shoe! Another shoe! That was easily my favorite event of 2008, was the Iraqi guy who threw shoes at George Bush. Because <laughs> that was impressive on many levels, you know? First of all, for eight years, the whole world had been saying what an idiot George Bush was. People in America that voted for him were like, yeah, I know, he's a retard, we get it. <laughs> but let me tell you something, he tricked us. He's not that dumb. Because an idiot would have got hit with a fucking shoe. Is that a shoe? George Bush not only ducked the shoes, but he made it look fun, didn't he? It's okay, fellas, I got this. Me and Laura play this game. So that was impressive that George Bush ducked not one, but two shoes. And what was even more impressive was that that Iraqi guy had shoes. I'm just saying, I would have expected a flip-flop. But this guy had full-on sneakers. That means he went shopping that morning. Yes, I am looking for something in uh, size 13. Uh, preferably uh, aerodynamic. <laughs> it's for president. 
Where are the Arabs at tonight? Arabs in the house, where are you? All strategically placed, I see. That's no accident, huh? All in the center. If this way, we all go boom in the middle of everything. Else. What kind of Arab are you, bro? Moroccan? And Iraq? Just, just Iraq? So not Moroccan. You're Iraqi. I've been to Iraq obviously, to perform, but obviously not for, you know, the Iraqis. It's not a very, you know, comedy-filled place, you know. It's, it's not like there's comedy clubs in, in Iraq, you know, like, welcome to Saddam's Jihad hut. You know, it's not like... Our comedy is the bomb. Watch us explode with laughter. Uh, so you're Iraqi, what are you guys over there? Kuwait. Saudi. Is it Saudi or Saudi? Because I did shows in Bahrain once, and uh, there were Saudi people in the audience, and I go, oh, where are you from? The guy goes, Saudi! And I, I thought he hiccuped or something while he was saying Saudi. I thought he was like, Saudi, you know, but like, I go, what, what did you say? He goes, Saudi! And I go, what the fuck? And I asked somebody after, I go, why is he saying Saudi? And they go, that is actually the correct way of saying Saudi. It's Saudi. I go, so do I drive an Audi or an Audi? What, do I, what am I driving? What am I driving? I always have fun in the Middle East. I always have a good time. What, my white friends, have you gone to the Middle East at all? No, you should go check it out. I like that. You shaved your head, but you kept a unibrow. That's very cool. I like... That's pretty insane looking, that thing. Look at that. That's... Well, I was going bold, but if I had hair, it would come down to here, wouldn't it? it... You should go check out the Middle East. It's not at all how the media makes the Middle East seem. It's, you watch the news, especially the North American news, they have some sort of hard-on for the Arabs. And that whenever they show you Arab people on the news, they're always, they, they make them look crazy. That's the thing. Don't they, when you watch the news and you watch like CNN, don't you get mad? They just make Arabs look like they're exploding every five minutes. You know what I mean? They make it look like they're walking around going, yes, I'm going shopping. What are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to blow up. Okay, well, I'll see you in paradise. Okay? <laughs> Hey, save me a virgin. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. You, you earned them, you earned them, they're yours. You go to the Middle East, very friendly people. I always have fun with the Arabs. They're, 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 all, they're actually very nice. They're, they're rich as shit. The ones I've seen, that, and you know what I'm talking about, Saudi guy. He, he's like, I know I'm very rich, it's okay, but... And like Arab rich, brown guy. Arab rich, very different than anybody else's rich. I may be considered American rich. That's cute to Arabs. Like uh, American rich. I have $10 million. Arab rich. I don't know which pants I put the $10 million in. I don't. Oh, there. maybe in the wash I'll find it one day. Yeah. Their rich is different. They keep trying to sell us different places on the news, too. They, keep, they, 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 they like shit all over the Middle East, but then they'll keep trying to sell Dubai to us. You know what I mean? You're, you're Indian, right? Yeah, don't clap for Dubai then, because... First of all, they won't let you have citizenship, even if you're born there. Second of all, they treat us like shit. <laughs> Listen, let's be honest. You go to the Middle East, Indians are the Mexicans of the Middle East. That's what we are. We... We build everything for them over there. All those fancy buildings they have, we built. And I don't know what part of India they went to to find these Indians, but I have never seen them before. <laughs> I've been to India, north, south, east, west, the whole place, and I never saw these Indians. They bought an entire race of Indians that doesn't exist in India anymore. <laughs> I swear to God, I went to Dubai, I went to a construction site, little Indian, like this big, full-grown men. Not midgets, just short and scrawny. And I was like, where did you find them? We bought all of them. We, uh, they were very cheap. We took, uh, how much? Give me the whole race, I'll take it. Yes. I have something I need built, so. And, and I'm not making this up. I went to a construction site, a full-on proper construction site with cranes and tractors. And there's these little Indian guys. I swear to God, the guy was wearing a wife beater, a tank top. 
boxer shorts, flip-flops, and a hard hat. I go, you got a hard hat, where's your steel toe boots? He goes, you see, we could only have one or the other. I have ten toes. I only have one head. Protect your head. But I've been to Lebanon, Jordan, Bahrain, Dubai. Uh, we're not going, I just said I've been there. It's not. And when you go to the Middle East, uh, I, I've asked around, why do they think, you know, why do they, you want to know why the, you know, these stereotypes have to come from somewhere. So I'm asking around when I'm in the Middle East, I go, hey, why do they think you're crazy? And everybody said the same thing. You would, you would expect them to go, it's America, they're doing this to us, they make us look crazy. That's not who they blame. I go, why do they think you're crazy? They go, it's not us. I go, who is it? They go, it's the fucking Saudis. They always blame you. I go, why do you blame the Saudis? Because they are crazy. You know Bin Laden? I don't know Bin Laden, first of all, all right? I... He's Saudi. Fucking crazy. So it's your fault. They keep trying to sell Dubai to us. That's, that's always funny to me. And whenever they try to sell Dubai in the commercials, they always make it look so glamorous. And it's always like a British voiceover or an American voiceover. Like, come on down to Dubai for the World Shopping Festival. Stay in the beautiful seven-star Jumeirah Beach Hotel. See the world's tallest building. Stay on the beautiful Palm Island. I'm like, ooh, that sounds good. And then I'm in like Lebanon and I asked around. I go, they go, where were you before this? I go, I was in Dubai. Oh, it's stupid. <laughs> I go, what do you mean it's stupid? They do dumb things. What do you mean they do dumb things? They have the tallest building in the world. It's empty. <laughs> There's like having fastest car with no engine. They have a seven-star hotel. When did five become not enough? I go, they made an island that looks like a palm tree. You got to admit, that's kind of impressive. Yes, that's a good idea. Only wrong tree. What do you mean wrong tree? You see, Russell, there is a reason you never hear an Arab voice advertising this tree. Which tree? The palm tree? Yes. Why won't you say it? Because there is no P in the Arabic alphabet. The P is a B. Nobody wants to stay on bomb tree. Okay, aside from that, isn't that a cool idea? Palm tree island? No, it's only good if you are flying over. Then you look down and you go, hey look, bomb tree. But you go to bomb tree island, now you're on the island, you don't see bomb tree anymore. Hey, now I'm on shitty sand barge in the middle of the ocean. When you go there, you find out where the hot spots are to party. Have you been, ever been back to the Middle East at all, Iraqi guy? Sorry? Just Edgeware Road, what'd you say? Oh. <laughs> Sorry, Bayswater Road, that's... Yep, how's that bladder working out for you? Good? You know, if your jeans weren't so tight, you wouldn't have to pee so much. <coughs> all right, mate, just go piss. His girlfriend's like, please don't come back, please don't come back. <laughs> you go to the Middle East, you find out that Lebanon is the place to go. Did you go to Lebanon? That's the party place, isn't it? That's where everybody goes. That's their Vegas. And everybody kept telling me before I went to Lebanon, they were like, Oh, Russell, when you go to Lebanon, it's party. It's the best party you'll ever have. Best what? Best party. I don't know what a party is, but I'm going to trust you on this one. And let me tell you something, it was, it was the best time I ever had. It was like in Lebanon, they, they, it, was, it was crazy, like the shit, like it's not even like, wow, they were just nuts, it was just like a good vibe, it was like a fun time. I remember I, I did my shows there, and after the shows, these four Lebanese dudes roll up, and they're like, hey, great show, Russell, uh, you want to go party? I go, I, if I have to go party, I will, thank you. Um, no, party, we go to nightclub, you want to go? I go, yeah, sure. Four Arab fellows whom I've never met before. <laughs> Let me assist you in my own abduction. So, I... I get in the car with these four guys, because I'm an idiot, right? 
I get in the car, but I get stuck in the middle seat in the back, which is even worse. Now, and we start driving to this nightclub, right? And uh, now here's the thing. You put five guys in a car, or rather four that can speak the same language, and you put four guys in a car that are going to a nightclub, and it's going to sound rowdy. Even if you don't understand the language, it's going to sound rowdy because four guys gone the way to a nightclub is like, it's going to be off the fucking chain. We're going to get bottle service. There's going to be bitches, 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 bitches. And that's all you think. But then you add the fact that they're all speaking Arabic, and they're probably saying the same shit, but if you don't understand it, it sounds fucking aggressive. And I'm in the back seat, and all I hear is, And I start panicking, because I'm thinking, holy shit, they're arguing as to who's going to kill me. I'm thinking they're going, no, I killed this one, I killed the last one, you killed this one, I don't want to kill him, you killed this one. And especially in Lebanon, I don't even think they're speaking Arabic properly, and all I keep hearing is Habibi, that's all I keep hearing. No, no, Habibi, 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 Habibi. Ah, Habibi, I want you to meet my brother Habib. Habib, Habibi, 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 Habibi. So I try to turn the conversation back to English, and I go, so uh, guys, well, well, tell me about the nightclub. You're going to love it, it's beautiful. Okay, well, tell me about it. It's bomb shelter. <laughs> I go, that's hilarious, what do you mean? It, it's bomb shelter. We're going to a nightclub called bomb shelter? It's bomb shelter, yeah. I go, don't you think that's hilarious? No. <laughs> what do you mean, no? It's, we're in Beirut. We're going to a place called Bomb Shelter. Yeah. Why is it funny? I go, it's ironic. It's like going to India and going to a nightclub called Diarrhea. Yeah. Come on down to Diarrhea. It's the shit. So I go, the, the nightclub is called Bomb Shelter? No, it is B-O-80. I go, it's Boat. No, B-O-80. <laughs> Where I come from, B-O-A-T spells Boat. No, it's B-O-18. B-O-18? Yes. But it sounds like you're saying B-O-A-T. I know, but that's not what I'm saying. Uh, you ask the name, I'm telling you the name. B-O-1-8. But locals, we just call it B-O. <laughs> Why? Because everybody thinks we're saying boat otherwise. <laughs> I'm like, well, all right. So we're driving, and we get to what looks like a vacant parking lot. And they go, we're here. And I go, we are where? There is nightclub. I go, no, there is empty parking lot. <laughs> no, you see that guy? And I look, in the middle of the parking lot, there's a big Lebanese guy standing there like this. <laughs> go to him. And what? <laughs> he will let you in. Let me in where? <laughs> the nightclub. I go, why don't we all just go together? No, we are going to bark the car. You're going to do what to the car? <laughs> We're going to bark. <laughs> well, let me bark with you. Oh! <laughs> Fuck it all, how? So, so they go, no, it's easier for you because you are not from here. They will let you in, no problem. No what? No problem. <laughs> and then what about you guys? We will talk, we will get in, we'll meet you inside, don't worry, so you go. So I'm like, all right. And then I start panicking again because I'm thinking, holy shit, these guys are going to smoke me when I get out of the car and then they're going to drive away. They're going to shoot me in the back of the head in the parking lot. So I get out of the car and I bolt. I just gun it towards that guy. And as I'm about here, I realize I'm running right towards the guy that's going to kill me, right? Because why is there just a random guy standing in the middle of the parking lot? And as I get there, I turn on my gangster, right? Because, you know, guys, when we see another dude, especially a bouncer, we, we don't walk up and go, hey, how's it going? Because you don't want to be the dick, right? You wanna, you wanna, so I, I try to be cool. I roll up and I'm like, yo, what's up? A nightclub around here? I, I don't know why I turned into a, a black American guy, but fuck it, I did. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, Jack, where's it at, motherfucker? Right, so... I go, is there a nightclub around here? And the guy just goes like this. 
And he steps aside and there were stairs leading into the ground. And I go, down there? And he goes, so I run down the stairs, right? Because I'm thinking, this guy's going to shoot me in the head too. I'm all paranoid about getting shot in the head, right? So I run down the stairs because I figure if he's going to shoot me in the head, I want to be at the bottom of the stairs when it happens. I don't want to get shot at the top of the stairs and my last few seconds alive are me falling down the stairs, you know? It's bad enough, you bam, and then, ooh, ah, ooh, that's going to suck, right? At least this time, I'm at the bottom of the stairs, it's like, bang, and it's like, oh, you know, but... So I run down to the bottom of the stairs, and I look back up, and the guy just does this. So I get to the bottom of the stairs, and I take a step, and there's another guy standing there. And I'm like, dude, is there a, a nightclub around here somewhere? And the guy steps aside, and there's a door behind him. Now, usually, when you're standing outside a nightclub, you can hear something. You hear something, you hear at least... I don't hear shit. I just hear crickets, little Lebanese crickets. So is there a nightclub around here? And out of complete silence, he opens his door and I hear <laughs> And I go inside this place, it's a fucking bomb shelter. Let me tell you something, it's not a club that they designed to look like a bomb shelter. It's not like they took the O2 Arena and went, tonight we're going to make a bomb shelter motif. No, it is a bomb shelter. Let me tell you something, it's not it didn't used to be a bomb shelter, and now they've converted it. It's still a bomb shelter. It's not like they took the bomb shelterness out of it. They just put speakers into it. That's all they did. That's what I love about the Arabs. They got balls like that. They're like, oh, Habibi, we have not been bombed in a while. And we are wasting the space. Yalla, bring some speakers. Dance party. Okay, buddy, I know my name. <laughs> See, those pauses are called timing, not retard timing. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's called pacing, Chico. <laughs> How are you doing there, Brian? <laughs> you look mixed. What's your mix, buddy? Both of my parents are mixed. Both of your parents are mixed? So your whole family looks like you? <laughs> So both your parents are mixed with what? Why is this so confusing for you? you just, I, I, I don't know. I just, I just know they're mixed. What, what, okay, what's your mom? She's from Zimbabwe. And your father is from Zimbabwe. Senegal, can you Google mix for me? That just sounds like two parts Zimbabwe. And since it only takes two people... Hey, Senegal, where is it? What is your name, anyway? Fode. What? Fode. Fode? That is fantastic. I think I was saying, oh, for the kind of oh, yeah. You heard him, right? You heard him. That guy's like, I did say for the, I heard him. How do you spell your name? F O D E. That's like a fancy for the. For the. Now, for the white guy who doesn't understand, uh, Fudi in, uh, in Punjabi is vagina. So if you think he's a cunt now, you are correct.
You are a big black footie is what you are. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. What's your girlfriend's name? Please don't say Laura. That would be so weird. You see, Laura is penis. <laughs> and you would go together so well, you know what I mean? But... <laughs> That's good stuff there, Fuds. <laughs> Any Irish people here tonight? Irish folks in the crowd? Yeah? Are you Irish, sweetheart? Okay, good. I like the Irish. I've been there a lot of times. A lot of, I've been there a lot of times. <laughs> Many times. What, what part of Ireland is your family from? County Mayo. Like mayonnaise? <laughs> but just without the nays. It's County Mayo. Why is it called County Mayo? Because we're all very white there. <laughs> County tomato sauce is next door. They're very... Very sunburnt over there. there. I, like, I like Ireland. You know, here's the thing. In America, everybody claims to be Irish. Every white person in America says they're Irish. I was in Boston. If you ever go to Boston, it'll freak you out. Everybody in Boston thinks they're Irish. I, I'm, in, I'm there. I'm like, what are you, man? He goes, fucking Irish. I go, oh, cool. What part? Boston. I forgot about that bridge they built. Yeah. Your parents from Ireland? Nah, Boston. Grandparents, Boston. Great grandparents, Boston. When the fuck were you Irish? They always claim to be Irish, but they're not Irish. And I've been to Ireland about 13 times. If you haven't gone, I don't know why you haven't gone. It's right there. You can jump on EasyJet for like 10 pounds and fly to Ireland. Brown people, you need to go to Ireland because we're exotic over there. The Irish hate it when Americans go back there and tell them they're Irish. That's my favorite thing to watch. How you doing? I'm Irish. You're not fucking Irish. You're a fucking cunt. That's what I love about this part of the world. You can say the word cunt and nobody gets upset. It's true that you guys, you guys say it like, how are you fucking cunt? How are you? Oh, you cunt. I haven't seen you in a long time. What are you up to, you fucking twat? <laughs> you can't say cunt in America. Everybody gets really freaked out by the word. I don't you guys say it so casually. I like the way the Irish say it the best, you know. In America, they get upset. I, get, I can understand why they get upset about, with the word cunt in America because of our accent over there. We pronounce it with a hard k and a unt. Cunt. It sounds mean and aggressive, you know. It's, it doesn't sound like the soft, delicious thing that it is, you know. It, Cunt. Sounds like a really big rock being thrown into the middle of a lake, doesn't it? Cunt? Like that same... Cunt? But when the Irish say it, it sounds like, look at you, you're a fucking cunt. Doesn't cunt sound nice? Don't you want to be a cunt? I want to be a cunt. Who's the little cunty cunty? Who's the little cunty cunty? What are you doing? I'm taking my weak cunt for a walk. Can I pet your cunt? Don't touch my cunt, he has teeth, he bites. I love the Irish. They swear more than any human beings on the planet. I remember I did shows in Belfast, Northern Ireland one time. I got off stage, this dude walks up and goes, Hey, you're fucking brilliant tonight. You were great fucking crack. You were fucking crack on. Fuck you, you ugly fucking cunt. You were fucking shy. Fuck off. Fuckity fuck. Fucker fucky. Oh, Mally. Oh, Sullivan. Drink some Bailey's. Fuck fuck. Fuckity fucker. Fucky fucky. Come over here. Fuck yay. I was like, well, thank you. Father. I'll see you on Sunday. <laughs> they are physically the whitest people on the planet, though. I, uh, like, you're a pretty white guy, sir. Don't get it twisted. But, um, but you over there, 
easily Indian. You know what I mean? Because they are really like, here's how white they are. I'm not making this up. I was flying, I was flying to Galway one time on, uh, on my favorite airline, Aer Lingus. I, uh, not for any other reason, but I just like the name Aer Lingus. You know what kind of marketing you could do with Aer Lingus? Coffee, tea, or... You know, just... Fly with Aer Lingus. We go down, but we don't go down. So I'm on the flight, flying to Galway, right? And there's this girl uh, from Galway. She's a cute Irish girl, and, and we're talking, and she's really nice. She's like... Well, why don't you come by my work tomorrow, and we'll go for a bit of lunch. And I went, okay, what time? And she went, why are you talking like that? And I said, I have no clue. And she says, well, stop it, you sound like a fucking cunt. So, <laughs> I go to her work the next day, and when I'm picking this up, I walk into work and I go, Hi, is uh, Catherine here? This is how white they are. The lady goes, just a second, love. <laughs> Catherine? There's a black guy here looking for you. I'm like, where? Where is the black guy? I want to see the black guy in Ireland. Turns out, I'm the black guy in Ireland. 